Good day, fellow investors. ASOS stock analysis. Let's immediately start with the stock price and the environment. It is pretty much insane, but over two years, ASOS has lost 85% in stock market value. The stock was close to 6,000 and now it's trading at 800 free or 8 pounds and free pennies, cents, whatever. This is the environment. And I received an email from Arnaud. If you have questions about my research platform or any questions, you can send me an email here. This is the only email I use. I will never send you an email if you're not on my investment course or something. So uh, be careful with scammers. There's many Sven Karlins out there that are after crypto investments or something like that. And here is the question. It would be great to do a video about retailers such as ASOS, VF, Buhu, Zalando, and so on. Especially ASOS, Nick Sleep has been owning it and we are somewhere at the bottom, maybe. The question here says everything you need to know about retailers. So let's dig into them. Buhu, again, 85%. So the market is following that. Zalando was down 85% but has rebounded and now it's down just 62%. So the environment there is clearly negative towards these e-commerce retailers. Is the market right or is the market wrong? If we just look at ASOS history, the market has been wrong on the upside already three times because the stock price is now below where it was in 2000. 10. So there must be an issue also with the businesses. And that is exactly what we're going to discuss. Let's discuss the business. And if you look at the business, you will see that it is a clear turnaround. Thus, as Warren Buffett says, stay away from turnarounds, even if Nick Sleeps owns them. And this is the plan, a recent new CEO restructuring plan to weather inflation costs, whatever. And if you're wondering what ASOS is, it is a destination for fashion-loving 20-somethings around the world, mostly in the UK, and they own various brands. They have paid a lot for Topshop just a while ago. And what's going on? Total sales in pounds, keep in mind the pound went south, have been plus 4% over the year. Gross margins went down 2%. In a retail business, that is the difference between making money and losing money. And you can see here, EBIT margin even lower. So they didn't make much money, profit before tax, some taxes, and they are at zero. High capital increases needs, high debt because their inventories went up. They simply didn't sell. And that's something that plagues this fashion businesses, retailers. As Charlie Munger says, at the end, is this just a goddamn retailer again, which is not a great business to be in. So the key financials, sales, okay, down or stagnant, not really growing. As we have seen, freight and duty, gross margin, this is very nice. So gross margin up thanks to price increases, and then gross margin down even more thanks to clearance and markdown. Thus, thanks to price decreases. You got to love this fashion finance. And the plan is uh, delivering a renew commercial model because yes, the next one will always work. Stronger economics, flexible balance sheet, refreshed leadership, and that will turn everything around and lead to making a lot of money. We will see. Let's dig into the financial. If you want to check 10-year financials in a quick and nice way, I'm using Ticker. You can use my link in the description below to support the channel. So let's start with the income statement. You can see a lot of growth over the last 10 years. So really growing well. Good gross margins going down now. So there have been some issues recently. You can see the gross margin going down. And that also gross margin down, that's the difference between making money and losing money. So making, making, making money, and then you lose money because of a 4% gross margin difference. But there is something more important with these fashion businesses and 
when you look at the balance sheet, you look assets, 3 billion, oh great, liabilities, 2 billion, 1 billion in equity. You compare that to the market cap. Oh, you say this is trading below book value. This is a value investment. But if I go back to here, you always need to check, okay, what is this value made of? And you have it here, inventory ballooned to 1 billion. What does it mean? What does this mean? This means you can't sell your items. No, it's not, it's stuck in freight. No, it's people are not buying what you have made. And this is very common with fashion businesses. This is inventory. This is what they paid for it, not what they think they will sell it. 50% gross margin. They planned to sell this for 2 billion. That's not going to happen with most of it. And therefore you can say, okay, if there is fire sale, this may be worth half of it. 500 billion, not a billion. Then we have goodwill or other intangibles, 700 billion. If they don't make money, the goodwill, again, down 300 million, let's say, and there is where your equity evaporates. Simply inventory, equity, goodwill, evaporation, very, very easy. So to sum up, yes, they made good money in the past. If things return to the past, they will make 200 million per year. That's a P ratio of four on the current market cap. If there is a private equity firm wanting to take this, uh, if they can make 100 million, the price could be 1 billion. So that's a margin of safety. Huge inventory and intangible issue on the balance sheet. Not much real equity except for brand, which depends on cash flow, which there isn't. And this craziness also explains the ups and downs of the fashion businesses. And uh, after watching this for a year, I don't know what will happen. Now, I have followed ESSOS for the last year on my research platform, reports, conferences and everything, because I wanted to see, okay, this is something that Nick Sleep owns. It looked cheap when it crashed. What's going on there? So I put it into my covered stock market portfolio and I did the following. So I think we bought somewhere first time around 900 or something. Then I said, okay, this is a turnaround play or maybe value, maybe they have a position. It seems they don't. And then when it got to 500, I bought again. And now I said, okay, they don't have the turnaround power. They don't have a moat. And we go back to the beginning of here. They don't have a moat because this is it, about retailers, one, two, three, and so on. So there is no competitive advantage. And uh, that's a very, very difficult business. You are gambling there. And therefore, after a year of following, my conclusion is that it is a turnaround investment in a very competitive environment. It's just a goddamn retailer. It doesn't have the economies of scales, shared scales, Nick sleep. So it looks like Nick was asleep with Essos. That's how it is. There might be a margin of safety in a private equity buyout, but uh, that's about it.